Hey everyone, my name is Kat and I'm here from Food Inbox and today we're going to be talking about something that's very important if you're planning on traveling to Japan in the near future and that is the JR Pass and just this week they have announced that they're going to be increasing the prices of the JR Pass quite significantly so if you are planning on traveling to Japan this is definitely something to think about. Now just for some context, uh, me and Alex we've just come back from our month's worth of travel around Japan and we didn't actually get the JR Pass this time so we have a few tips and tricks um, as an alternative to the JR Pass, which we're going to talk about a little bit today. So yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, so first things first, what is the JR Pass? Now, I'm sure if you have any knowledge about Japan, you've probably come across the JR Pass before. And essentially what it is, is a public transport ticket, which is designed for foreigners. And you're supposed to buy this before you arrive in Japan. Once you get into the country, you can go to one of the JR uh, train, um, I guess, offices, and they will exchange it for a pass, which actually gives you guys unlimited travel all around the country. Now, if you are doing quite a lot of uh, trips on the bullet train, uh, buses, things like that, the JR Pass can actually be very handy because it is unlimited and you can pretty much travel wherever you want at whatever time you want and it's all included in the standard ticket price. So that's, I guess, what the actual JR Pass is. And it is very, very popular for a lot of tourists. They do end up buying it. You can get the JR Pass in a seven day, a 14 day and a 21 day pass. So depending on how long you're gonna be there for, you can kind of plan it around that uh, JR Pass. And for a lot of people, it is actually an essential item. Like it's just as important as booking your hotel and your flights. Um, that's kind of how important the JR Pass is to a lot of travelers who go to Japan. Now, one of the most positive things about uh, the JR Pass is the affordability of it. And it can really save you some money when it comes to um, taking a lot of uh, machine consents, especially across country. So just last week, the Japan Rail Company has actually released that they are going to be increasing these prices on the JR Pass. And I'm just gonna read them out for you because they are um, quite significant. So the uh, seven day pass, it's going from 29,650 yen and it's jumping up to 50,000 yen, which is a 69% increase, which is quite a lot. Uh, the 14 day pass, it's going from 47,250 yen to 80,000 yen, which again is a 69% increase. And the last one, the 21 day pass, it's rising from 60,450 yen all the way up to 100,000 yen. Now this one's a little bit less, it's a 65% increase, but guys, that's still a lot of money considering that this was, um, I guess, supposed to be a very affordable option for tourists. These price rises are gonna make it a little bit difficult for people to justify the JR Pass. Now these price rises, they are due to come into effect in October, although the date hasn't actually been confirmed yet. So we don't know yet, it could be September, it could be November, it could be smack bang 1st of October, uh, but it's definitely something to keep your eye out on, especially if you are planning to travel to Japan in the near future, because this is gonna add a significant cost onto your trip if you were just planning on picking up the JR Pass and using it all around the country. Okay, so there are a few positives to the JR Pass price increase. Uh, the first one here is that the Nozomi Shinkansen trains are apparently gonna be included now in the JR price. Um, now, previous to this, or at the moment, I guess, um, you are able to take a lot of different Shinkansen around the country, but Nozomi trains are not included. And for anyone who doesn't know what the Nozomi bullet trains are, they are a rapid service, which goes um, particularly between uh, Tokyo and Osaka, and it does make the trip a lot faster. Um, I think it's about 40 or 50 minutes difference. Um, and yeah, it is normally a more expensive train, which I think is probably why it's not included in the JR Pass. But yeah, that's one of the um, positives of the price increase. The Nozomi trains will be included. The second uh, positive about the JR Pass price increases is that there are going to be apparently more discounts available for JR Pass holders. So I'm not sure what those are gonna be. Maybe it's gonna be on hotels or attractions, something like that. Um, I'm sure we'll find out what that's all about. But yeah, that is something that has been announced as a positive to the price increases as well. Okay, so now that we know that there are gonna be these price increases, what does that mean for you guys? Should you get the JR Pass? Should you not? I mean, really, that's going to be up to you and what your budget is for your trip and where you're planning on going. But just um, for some context, there are some alternatives to buying the JR Pass, which will still save you money and get you out and about all around Japan. 
So the first one is the JR Regional Passes. Now these are different to the regular JR Pass that everyone usually talks about because they do just tend to focus on specific regions of Japan. Now at the moment, these Regional Passes haven't got any sort of price increase on them yet, uh, which still makes it a great uh, option if you are planning on traveling all around Japan. Just as an example, uh, some of the JR regional passes that exist, there's one for East Japan, there's one for West, there's one for Hokkaido. Um, so yeah, there's a whole bunch that kind of cover just little sections of Japan and you will be able to uh, get unlimited travel within that region on that JR pass. So I guess depending on where your itinerary is taking you, if you are going to be spending a significant amount of time in a specific region of Japan, it might be worthwhile looking at getting one of those regional passes because as I said before, the prices on those have not got any kind of increase yet. Uh, yeah, so that's a great alternative. Okay, now the second alternative to the JR Pass is actually something that we would do probably anywhere else in the world, and that is using a plane and actually flying from city to city. Now in Japan, because they do have the Shinkansens and they are so convenient, a lot of people don't even think about the idea of flying. Often at times it can actually be cheaper to fly from city to city. So for example, um, you can fly from Haneda Airport into Kansai Osaka Airport, and prices for those, um, especially if you go for one of the budget airlines, they can be very affordable. Now, the only thing about um, taking flights, which you have to consider, is that you will have to make your way to the airport, uh, which is not always easy, especially um, if you're staying kind of in the middle of the city and then you have to travel all the way out to the airport. But it is an alternative and the flights are generally quite quick because planes tend to go quite fast. Uh, yeah, so that is another alternative to taking the JR Pass, which might save you a bit of money. Now, a third alternative to buying a JR our pass would be to use Japan's bus network and take buses from city to city. Now, usually people would take buses, um, it's normally probably locals, I guess, and they would take them um, out into the country or I guess places that don't have a great uh, public transport system with the Shinkansens or the train network. But it is pretty easy to get a bus from city to city. So for instance, if you wanted to get a bus from Osaka to Tokyo or Tokyo to Kyoto or something like that. Um, yeah, so buses, they are just like Shinkansens in the sense that they are very clean, they are on time and it is a very smooth ride. So again, might be something to consider if you're not planning on buying the JR Pass, um, you could take the buses as well. Now, the main alternative to the JR Pass that I really want to talk about um, is buying single Shinkansen tickets. Now, on our trip to Japan, that's actually what we did. We didn't end up opting for a JR Pass just because of our itinerary. We were only traveling uh, from Tokyo to Osaka and then um, over to Kyoto and then back up to Tokyo. So for us, it didn't really make sense to get the JR Pass because we were going away for such a long time and we weren't really traveling uh, to you know either end of the country we were just kind of staying in the middle area so what we ended up doing is actually just buying single Shinkansen tickets um, which basically meant we uh, bought a ticket from point A to point B and so on and so forth so the way that we actually did this was through an app which is called SmartX and the reason I'm recommending this app is because it actually really works for us and it was such a smooth experience and it was just easy for us to do. So I'm going to show you guys what that app looks like. Just give me a moment. Is spelled smart, S-M-A-R-T, E for echo, X for xylophone. And yeah, this is an app and it does come in English and it's basically like a booking system where you can just go in and pick your departure point, pick your arrival point, and it'll display all the different Shinkansens uh, for the day that you're after. And you actually just put a credit card in. So for us, we just put our American Express and it's really easy for you to just to go in, book your ticket. It'll automatically take the cost out of your credit card. Then you just go to the Shinkansen uh, station and there's two different ways that you can actually enter the Shinkansen station. Within the app, there is actually an option for a QR code. So uh, you just need to make sure you go to one of the ticket booths that has a QR code reader. There is also the option for you to add uh, your Shinkansen ticket to a Suka card or a Pasmo card. Um, so basically what you do in the SmartX app, you'll just type in, I think it's a 16 or 17 digit code. You'll type that into the app and it will automatically link your Shinkansen ticket with your uh, IC card. So when you get to the train station then, all you have to do is just get your card, tap it, and then it will actually print you out a little ticket. So you take that ticket and that little ticket will have on it uh, the information about your uh, trip for that day, just in case you get stopped by the train guards. Uh, yeah, so that's the option that we ended up going for. And the really cool thing about the app is it will actually save your 
your Suica card um, in there. So every time you book a Shinkansen ticket, you don't need to re-enter all the numbers in. It will uh, literally just save it for you. So very easy, just tap, 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 all done. And yeah, that's the way that we ended up booking our tickets for travel all around Japan. The great thing about this SmartX app as well um, is that you can actually book your tickets very last minute. So what we ended up doing, we would just go on the night before and we decide uh, what time we wanted to leave in the morning. We go onto that app, uh, just pick whatever time frame suited us. And if you do make a mistake on the SmartX app and you book the wrong day or you book the wrong time, it is actually very easy for you to just go on there and amend the booking. So uh, because most of the Shinkansen's are the same price, assuming that you are just um, swapping a like for like kind of trip, um, it won't charge you any extra to change your booking. Um, and we found this really helpful, especially if um, we messed up our plans or you know we decided that we wanted to sleep in in the morning, so take a uh, later Shinkansen in the day. Um, so yeah, very handy um, option to have on the app. It's very easy to change and yeah, I found that really helpful when we were traveling around Japan. If you aren't able to use the app, um, there is the option for you to do this all on a desktop. So you can, if you have a computer, you can book all your tickets through SmartX on their desktop website. If you're not comfortable using uh, this program, you can also uh, just go to uh, Shinkansen station and you can buy uh, tickets from the ticket machine, just like you can with any other uh, train in Japan. So that's an option as well. And most of the large Shinkansen train stations, they will have a uh, ticket office, I guess, as well with people in there that you can actually go and talk to and book your tickets with the actual person face to face. We're just going to go through a few general Shinkansen tips on how to plan your trip and how to get the most out of it. So the first thing you really need to be aware of if you are uh, planning on traveling on a Shinkansen is the difference between a reserve ticket and a non-reserve ticket. So a reserve ticket, I guess it's similar to like when you book on a plane and you get to pick your seat. Uh, that's basically what a reserve ticket refers to. So you will have a designated seat on the train um, in a specific carriage as well. So um, yeah, you need to make sure that you go to the right carriage, get onto the right seat, and that will be yours. No one was sitting in it and because it is reserved specifically for you. Now, the difference between that and a non-reserved ticket is that most Shinkansens will have a few carriages on them that are reserved uh, for people who will just, I guess, get on, just take whatever seat is available. Um, I guess like a regular train, you know, you kind of just get on and sit wherever. That is what a non-reserved ticket would be like. Now, the reason people would go for a non-reserved ticket over the reserved option, if you don't have much luggage um, and you know you're traveling quite light and you're happy just to sit wherever, then um, yeah, non-reserved is a good option. Some people will also um, like the idea of a non-reserved option because it is technically a little bit cheaper. If you're very, very aware of your budget and you're trying to be budget friendly, going for the non-reserved option might be a cheaper option. Now, when you are traveling with oversized luggage, you will need to reserve a ticket. In each carriage, there will only be five spots available for people with oversized luggage. And normally that will just be the last row of the car um, that will have uh, two seats and then three seats with the aisle in the middle and there will be a little section behind there for you to actually put your luggage. Now oversized luggage um, it's best for you to actually go onto the JR uh, website and just confirm the dimensions of your suitcase because um, yeah, you'll be able to figure out then whether or not you will require um, an oversized luggage uh, seat or not and a lot of people do um, I guess try their luck um, it can be a little bit of a uh, hit and miss because if a train guard does come up to you and point out that it is oversized luggage, um, generally speaking, you can be fined. It normally is, I think it's about a thousand yen. Um, or similarly, if you get to the train station and you haven't got our um, oversized luggage reservation ticket, um, they may charge you a thousand yen if you're going to actually um, get on the train right then. So if you purchase your reserved oversized luggage uh, ticket, beforehand. Um, it is free. There's no charge for having the oversized luggage. It does just mean that there is a uh, limited seating per cart for that oversized luggage, if that makes sense. So yeah, when we were traveling, we did have one bag, which would be considered oversized. So we just decided to get two oversized um, luggage tickets on all the Shinkansen's that we went on and we did find it um, available. It was quite easy for us to do, but yeah, just need to be aware of that because if you don't want to get caught out, um, especially in a foreign country, if you don't speak the language, you don't want to be doing the wrong thing. And it can be very difficult if you are trying to uh, squeeze your big suitcase up into your little uh, seat that's not designed for it. So yeah, just be aware that you will need to purchase, um, ooh, sorry, you will need to reserve a ticket if you have oversized luggage. 
So just a few other tips um, if you are traveling on the Shinkansen in terms of etiquette, what to do and what to expect. First things first, you are allowed to eat on the Shinkansen. So that is quite different to if you are just taking a regular train around uh, Japan, around Tokyo or Osaka, where eating and drinking is normally prohibited and it's frowned upon. Because on a Shinkansen, um, you are generally traveling a fair distance. Uh, there are uh, flip, flip down tables flip down um flip down tables i guess tray tables tray tables just like what you have on um if you're traveling on a plane at your chair which you are able to eat at and it is quite popular in japan if you are traveling on the shinkansen to purchase yourself an ekiben which is short for ekibento and it's basically like just a little lunchbox that normally comes with rice or sushi or meat or something like that um, which people tend to purchase and then they eat that on the shinkansen so you are able to eat on the Shinkansen. You can bring your own snacks, you can bring your own drinks. And if you are traveling for a couple of hours, it's definitely a good idea to do that. Um, if you don't bring anything with you, um, they tend to have a trolley cart that will come through and they'll have certain snacks and things on it, which you can purchase. So um, that's what you would do in terms of food. But it is quite important if you are gonna be eating um, to make sure that you pick up your rubbish and take it with you when you get off the train. Now, the reason for this is, especially if you are getting on um, or getting off halfway through the journey, so you're not getting on at either end, um, there is a chance that there is gonna be someone who will be taking your seat once you get off the Shinkansen. So, I mean, if you've gone onto your train and you've reserved this, you've reserved a seat and you get there and there's rubbish there, you probably wouldn't be happy about it. So, similar sort of thing, don't do it to others. Just make sure that if you do, um, yeah, eat anything on the train, just take it with you. There's plenty of bins when you actually get off the train station. So you can just pop it in there, keeps the Shinkansen nice and clean, and it's a good experience for everyone. Now, another thing to be aware of on the Shinkansen, um, you can, I guess, if you are sitting next to someone you know, uh, small chit chat, I guess is allowed, but generally speaking, it's probably best for you if you are gonna be watching movies or listening to music, make sure you have your headphones on. It's just like any other train um, in Japan. Uh, just keep the noise to a minimum, um, especially because some people might be trying to sleep or they might be trying to work. Uh, just keep the noise down. And the last tip for if you're traveling on the Shinkansen, now this one's especially important if you've never been on one before, um, they do stick to a very strict schedule. So um, if the train says it's gonna leave at 12.30, it will be leaving at 12.30 on the dot. So make sure that you're there at least 10 minutes beforehand, just so you can get yourself ready, get yourself situated, and you know what car you're supposed to be in, because um, if you're not there on time, it will definitely leave without you. They're not gonna wait around for you at all. And this also goes um, when you are actually exiting and getting off the Shinkansen. Um, they will make announcements, so you'll hear, you know, it'll say next stop is wherever you're going to. Um, at that point there, it's best for you to start getting all your stuff ready, getting your suitcase down, getting your jacket on or whatever, um, so that when it actually pulls into the station, you are ready to just get straight off because People have to get off and people have to get on. And again, they really stick to that schedule. So there's not a lot of time for you to be fluffing about and picking things up. So just make sure that you're ready to get on the Shinkansen and get off the Shinkansen. Um, and that way you won't have any stress and it'll all go smoothly. Alrighty guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining us and I hope you've learned something about uh, the JR price increases and booking your own Shinkansen tickets. If you guys have any questions at all, just let us know in the comments, happy to reply to you guys. And of course, like and subscribe, we really appreciate the support. And we'll see you next time for another Japan travel video.